Hello, and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Welcome back for those of you that are returning. So today we're going to be having a little bit of fun with Proxmox. And this probably wouldn't be considered a standard installation or even a suggested step here inside of Proxbox. But a month, month and a half ago, if you follow my videos, we tried installing XCP-NG. And XCP dash ng doesn't have a way of storing isos like proxmox does instead it's suggested that you pass them in through some type of nfs share or samba share and store them on some external type of storage appliance well that's great and here on my Proxmox server, I'm running a little bit low on ISO space as it is. So I thought I would come up with a way that would allow me to keep standard naming and whatnot for demonstration purposes inside of Proxmox, but also have that share that we could use for the XCP-NG demos that I would like to continue to do. So what I've done today is I've virtualized an instance of Proxmox so we can play around with it without messing up our normal demo server. Here's our virtualized instance, and I've already gone ahead and created an SMB share here in a container. Now I can say this process is pretty standard for any of our other videos, and there's no forms of security or anything on here other than a password and username. So you can go ahead and follow any of my tutorials or any of the other tutorials or even Ubuntu's documentation itself on how to set this up. We won't be covering this today as we're having a little bit of fun and I don't want to go into an in-depth detailed demonstration on how to do such a project. The first thing I thought we'd do here is head up to data center and let's add that SMB storage in and add it in the traditional way into Proxmox that you would so we can see what that looks like and also make sure everything's working correctly before we try mounting this with command line. So in order to do that, let's go to data center and then we're going to go to storage. We're going to go to add and we're going to choose the SMB CIFS option. Here we'll be asked for a name and we can call it whatever we want. I'll call mine ISO today. And then we're asked for a server IP address and the IP address of that container is 192.168.2. Seven and then Proxmox asks us for our username, which we set up as VE with a password of test. And I'm telling you this password because you're going to see it later on in plain text. Now, with all that entered here under share, this drop down should connect to the server, and it does. It shows us the SMB or Samba share folder that we set up here using the Ubuntu tutorial. And over here, we'll select ISOs and remove disk images. At this point, we can go ahead and press add, and Proxmox adds our ISO drive. In a second here, it'll be fully connected, and we'll be able to look at it fully. And there we go, and we can add ISOs in here. Now this is great, so we have an ISO drive and we're connected, and I can upload drives to it or containers to it or whatnot. But every time I do a demo, I have to tell you that it's not the default option and about the default option, and that gets a little tiresome. And I don't think most of my viewers like hearing about it, although it's probably not much of a nuisance. I, I just feel like things could be smoother without talking about it. Here at our server, let's go ahead, open a shell. So here's the Proxmox shell. Now we know Proxmox stores all of its ISOs and everything in a particular drive. Where that drive is should be very similar to where it installs or stores container images. And we had to download one of those just a moment ago to set up our Samba share. So let's go ahead, open that log and look at where it's stored. So it looks like it stored that at VAR, LIB, VZ, templates, and cache. Now I know that cache shouldn't be the right folder. It should be ISO. So let's just copy that path here and we can head back to our shell terminal. And at our shell terminal, let's use an ls command so we can view the file structure and do a little bit of exploring. So we'll enter that file path that we found here, and we can see that we have a cache or an ISO. Now we know the cache is where 
it puts container templates from that screen prior. So let's see ISO. There should be nothing in that folder. All right, so there is nothing in that folder. What about cache? And cache has our Ubuntu. So we know the file path that we want to connect anything to is going to be the file path here. So now that we know where we want to connect our Samba share to, this should be a simple or rather simple mount process. We should use the command mount, and then we'll add a dash T to it. And since this is Samba, we're gonna use CIFS, and remember the option for Samba and CIFS are the same inside of Proxmox, and they're the same here on the command line. Now we're gonna give it a space, two slashes, and we'll give it the IP address to that Samba share, 192.168.27, run that with a slash, and then we're going to need to give it the name of our Samba share. And we set that up as Samba share slash. All right, so now from that point, Proxmox, in order to store its ISOs from that created drive, is going to be in templates and ISO. So let's go ahead, copy that portion of the path, and that should be the path at which we actually store the ISO images by default inside of Proxmox on our Samba share that we set up as a drive. But we're gonna also need for this share or this mount, the path at which we're going to want to mount these images to. And you can remember a moment ago, we discovered inside of our Proxmox system that Proxmox by default stores them at var, lib, vz, templates, ISO. So let's go ahead, we'll copy that, and we'll paste that in for our actual connection. So what this is going to do is it's going to connect our Samba share to that file structure, where at that file location, we're going to now show the contents of our Samba share. The next part of this command is going to be the authentication part because if you remember right we set up a username and password. So we're going to add a dash O for authentication and we're going to change our username to what we set up and remember it was VE and our password which was test gets entered here. Now when I press this or press enter I should get a return of my command line. At this point, we should have made a symbolic path mount from our Samba share that's in our container over to our local drive inside of our Proxmox system, where everything that's stored on our Samba share is now stored in local for this particular ISO file. This won't re-establish itself when you reboot Proxmox. And I'm not going to go through those steps today, but you could either establish this by copying and pasting this command and setting it to run at reboot using cron tab, or the suggested way is actually to use fs tab and set it inside of that. And again, I won't be covering that in this tutorial. We're having a little bit of fun and we're seeing if this is even possible right now. And I want to again remind you if you're watching and you skip the intro to our video, this is not a suggested technique for Proxmox. It's kind of hackery, but we're having a little bit of fun. And I thought I'd share some of this thought process and this steps with you so that you could use it for customizing your own server if you so choose. So now if if I get rid of our console screen, we should have a link between the ISO on this drive and the ISO here on this drive. One of the best ways to test that is to actually download a file to it. So let's go ahead and set up a direct download feature for Ubuntu. And I think there's now a new image out for Ubuntu desktop that we don't already have. So let's go ahead go to the desktop section of their downloads and download this new 24.04 LTS that's out. In order to do that, let's click on download and we don't need to give it some subscribe information. 
will cancel where it wants us to automatically download it to the system. Here at Download Now, let's right click on it and copy link address, heading back to Proxmox, let's select our ISO drive. So we know our ISO drive is directly connected to our Samba share because it's set up in our Samba share. But if something shows up in our ISO drive, it should also show up in our local drive because we made that mount. So we can test this most easily by downloading an object to ISO and seeing if it appears in local. So selecting ISO and ISO images, let's download from URL and we'll paste our UL, URL that we just received. Click query URL. Now we could download this file right now without any harm. We don't plan on running it. This is a test system, but it's always good practice and I'll show you how to do it here. To hit advanced, select your hash algorithm, and we're 256 here. Go ahead, hit verify your download. So at this point, we can go ahead and actually just press download, and we should be able to download by pressing the download button. So this download will start, and it's going to take a few minutes. You can see that we're downloading right here. And I will cut this video at this moment and return back to you when we're done downloading. So I don't waste any of your time. Alrighty, so you can see now that Ubuntu has indeed downloaded to the ISO drive. And if we move here to local and go to ISOs, we've also downloaded Ubuntu 20.4 into the local drive. Or rather, we downloaded it into the video SMB share container which is connected to the ISO drive. And then we did also a symbolic mount from the local drive path, or rather the location of our Samba share to our local drive path earlier in the video. And since they're both connected to the same folder, they show up in the same place. So I hope you enjoyed this a little bit of fun we had and maybe learned a little bit more about mounting different locations and some of the power that we have by using SMB and NFS shares inside of our Proxmox system for moving data around and how we can control the way data moves around inside of our Proxmox system. I'm going to conclude this tutorial here. I hope you enjoyed it and you consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get further content. We do mostly DIYs and informational videos about Linux and virtualization top. As always, have a good night.